Falun Dafa, also known as Falun Gong, is an advanced self-cultivation practice that improves mental and physical wellness through physical exercises and the development of one's character. In China, cultivation practices have a history of thousands of years and form the spiritual foundation of Chinese civilization. In 1992, Falun Dafa was introduced to the public by Master Li Hongzhu. The practice quickly spread because of its profound principles and proven health benefits. By 1999, with over 100 million practitioners, Falun Dafa had grown to become the largest practice of its kind in China and around the world. Welcome to Pyramid Times. Myself, Vina Surbu, Vice President at Pyramid Times, and we have with us wonderful guest, Joseph Adilio. Joseph Adilio is a doctor of chiropractic with his own clinic and have been in this practice for the last three years. He has been happily married to a beautiful wife, Sarah. He started practicing Falun Dafa for the six years ago when he went away to chiropractic college. He was introduced to it by a Buddhist monk and have since taken part in countless projects to help share this beautiful practice with others and help expose the persecution in China. He currently works on the side in media to help bring authentic reporting to people. He deeply value community, family and making a difference. So today's topic is going to be on Falun Dafa. With this, I welcome Joseph to Pyramid Time Show. Welcome, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So what made you do attract to this practice of Falun Dafa? Um, well, I, you know, I, six years ago, I was in college and um, I was struggling with, you know, anxiety and depression. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, I think, struggle with things like that. And uh, at the time, I was looking for something of deeper spiritual nature, something that could guide me through the, the maze of life or the troubles of life. And, um, and so I, I kind of made a wish in my heart. I said, you know, I want to find an authentic practice. Like, I, I hope to find something that can guide me through life. And so I kind of made a wish to the creator or God. And um, within a week, I was introduced to a new friend. Like I made a new friend at the college uh, and um, he was a Buddhist monk. He was a practicing Buddhist monk. I guess you would call it like a lay Buddhist. He was, because uh, he was at college and he wasn't in a temple. And uh, he, uh, he told me about this practice and we started talking back and forth. And he's like, you know what? I think, I think you would really love this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got into it. And he, um, he told me, actually, he told me three main things about the practice. Um, he told me that it's a practice of, it's an ancient practice from China. It goes back many millennia into the past. Um, he told me that, um, it's, they're good people that they practice medica meditation and that they practice the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. Um, and then he said, uh, the third thing was that they are severely persecuted in China. So right away, those three points really struck me. And uh, so I went home and I started researching and, uh, and then six years have gone by and, and here I am still practicing. So that's kind of how I got introduced to, to the practice. That's so very awesome. And tell us uh, more about the practices of Falun Dafa. Sure. So it's, it's an ancient practice. Uh, it, go back, it goes back millennia. Um, but Ultimately, it's about mind and body. So it's a spiritual discipline about cultivating your, your moral character, your mind and your, and your body. Uh, there's two main components to the practice. So there's the, the self-cultivation and then there's the practice. So very briefly, the, the cultivation is about um, improving your moral character. And it's based off three principles, truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. In Chinese, it's called Jen Shan Ren. So those, we understand that those three principles are the foundational uh, qualities of the, of the cosmos, of the universe. And so our goal is to assimilate to those principles, to align with them in our thoughts, in our actions, and in our deeds. So, um, you know, that's, it's not always easy um, to live by truthfulness, compassion, and, and tolerance, but it makes for a fulfilling life. Um, and it also guides you through the, the challenges and the tribulations of life. So that's the first part. There's the cultivation. And then the second part is the practice. The practice consists of five exercises. There's four that are standing. And um, 
it's think of it like tai chi exercises i don't know if you guys are familiar with like qigong tai chi yes. moving uh yes. slow moving and they're really beautiful very easy to learn and uh and then there's a the fifth one is a sitting meditation so it's uh mm -hmm. it's a, a sitting meditation and there's some mudras or some different hand positions and it's also very beautiful so those two things in combination help you uh, spiritually elevate. Uh, they help you spiritually mature. And, um, you know, I've seen an amazing transformation in my relationships, um, in my own character and uh, in my own experience in life. It's, it's definitely changed. So, and I have Falun Dafa to credit for that. So is uh, Tai Chi and Qigong part of Falun Dafa or uh, is it different from uh, Falun Dafa? Yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. There, um, it's, it's actually called, it's a Qigong practice. So mm -hmm. Falun Dafa is like a meditation slash Qigong practice. Um, it's, it's not Tai Chi. I just use Tai Chi kind of to explain it because people in the West aren't super familiar with, with uh, Qigong. Um, but yeah, it's part of it. It's a component of the cultivation. That's so amazing. And uh, how does it make Falun Dafa so unique? Well, I think you know, um, when the practice was introduced to the public, like it was a private lineage, you know, there's, there's so many different spiritual paths. Um, and a lot of them are passed on from one uh, teacher to a student, like one, one teacher to one student in, in lineage fashion. Um, Falun Dafa was also one of those practices that was passed down like that. And in the nineties, it was introduced to the public. Um, and it became so popular because of its, the strong, um, moral component of it. And other spiritual practices also have uh, moral components to them, like a, a moral philosophy. Of course, that's what makes them spiritual. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, Falun Dafa is, is unique in that it, it combines both the, the physical exercises, um, the Qigong exercises, and then the character cultivation. Um, and it's just something that, like if I were to tell someone, it's just something you have to dive into and experience yourself like any practice. Um, and, and you'll feel the uniqueness of it and you'll see how it, it is, it is very special and, um, it is very traditional and ancient. Um, but it's also something that you can do with a modern lifestyle. And that's one of the amazing things. It's like, even though we have modern work and families and there's a lot of stuff happening politically and all sorts of stuff in the midst of all of that, you can practice this like entirely, you can do this practice fully. Uh, you just have to carve time out, you know, in your morning or evening sort of thing. So amazing. Uh, can you also uh, introduce uh, your master to the audience, Master Li Hongzhi? Yes, yeah. So Master Li Hongzhi, he's uh, the gentleman, uh, the master of the practice. And um, there's, so in, in Falun Dafa, there's only one master. Uh, and everyone who comes into the practice is a student, of course. Um, so we've been, uh, we've been guided by Master Li since 1992 when he brought it to the public. And um, uh, he's very compassionate, very wonderful. And he's, he's provided the practice for free, essentially. So if someone wanted to learn Falun Dafa, they can, they can join. There's no roster. There's no membership. He's made it entirely free for anyone to join. You just have to go on the web page and uh, download the books. You download the books. You can watch the videos. It's, it's literally all there. And uh, I remember when I first started practicing, I was blown away that there was no money exchanged in the practice. So if you just wanted to learn, you could dive in and, and learn yourself. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, that's it. So he, um, at, in the nineties, when he brought it to the public, um, my understanding is that, he, you know, it was the right time for society to accept a practice like that. And for people to start cultivating, I think, uh, you know, in the nineties and into the two thousands, people have really been searching for, for deeper truth. So, yeah. That's so nice. Is it anyway related to Buddhism or Taoism? Is it related to Buddhism? Or Taoism? Tao. Or Taoism. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, that's a great question. Um, it is a Buddhist tradition. So it has roots in Buddhist traditions, but it's not Buddhism uh, specifically. So it, it's a very separate and distinct path. Um, you know, but it, it does recognize Buddhist uh, traditions and um, it also has some components of Taoism uh, that you'll see like the Taiji. Um, and it's not that, that it's, you know, taken this and that from different practices, but those are universal truths. And so they are a components of Falun Dafa because if, if, if it's a universal truth, it will be found in, in, a, 
in a, in a higher, uh, like a practice like Falun Dafa, right? Um, but they are all separate and distinct schools. So I think a lot of times when a new person comes in, uh, something that might be a stumbling block is that they consider it Buddhism or they consider it Taoism. And so you have to actually, with any practice, I think you have to put both feet in and not have one foot out, one foot in another practice, you know? Um, so the, the best way to advance in, in something like Falun Dafa is to kind of, you know, understand that it is its own separate practice and to walk into that practice without interference from other teachings. And that was for me, my experience, the best way to practice, I, I had to get rid of the other teachings that I had in my mind, because, you know, the different ideas and philosophies will conflict. So you have to just dive all in. And, and um, so that's the best advice I can give is try not to um, conflate them with other other practices. So when we are into Falun Dafa, we shouldn't uh, indulge in any other practices? Well, I think I think if, if you're diving into the, if you're looking into to see if the practice is right for you, definitely like, like jump into the books, explore it and, and see if, if it's something you resonate with. But I think if you really want to advance and, and, and make uh, deep progress in the practice, uh, every practitioner I know of uh, only does Falun Dafa. And that's a decision they come to on their own. Um, it's it's made quite clear in the in the practice and in the teachings that if you mm -hmm. truly want to advance, um, any master of a, a, a an ancient spiritual practice would tell you that you have to have both feet in in the practice, um, because it you'll just get there'll be too much confusion and interference with other practices, especially also when you consider that when like you're doing the exercises, you're establishing um, an energy current around your body. So if you're doing one set of exercises from one practice and then another set of exercises from another practice, the energies could get mixed up in the body. So there's also that component uh, to it as well. That's so true. That's very nice. Can you emphasize more on the principles of Falun Dafa? Truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. Oh, the three principles, yes. So these are the, um, it's understood that these are the, the fundamental qualities of the cosmos. Like everything has these qualities, Jen Shen Ren, or truth, compassion, and forbearance. Now in English, the words are, they sound very simple, like truth, compassion, and forbearance. Like, oh yeah, I'm truthful, I'm compassionate. Uh, in Chinese, the, the, the words Jen Shen Ren have very deep meaning, and they can mean many English words. Um, but ultimately, uh, when you think you're being truthful, you can always find more in yourself where you can even be more truthful. You know, when you think that you're um, being compassionate, you'll always find that there's shortcomings and there's always room to improve. So these are principles that are, they, they're con you can get so deep into them um, and you can always find your own shortcomings by applying these principles to your life. Um, and one of the very interesting things is that these principles, my understanding is that in tr within truth, there's also compassion and forbearance. You can't separate them. Right within uh, compassion, you, there's also the elements of truthfulness and forbearance. So my understanding of forbearance is like if someone hits you, you don't hit them back. Um, having self-control, having self-restraint, um, having patience, having forgiveness, that sort of thing. It has many English words to explain uh, one Chinese word, but um, yeah, they're 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 very simple on the surface, but applying them in life can be very challenging at times, especially when you have you know families and relationships and the challenges of relationships, whether it's your husband or your wife or your friends or um, things get challenging in life, but at least you have something to fall back on and, and guide you through um, through those challenges. And obviously you have mentioned already that you have, uh, you made your life better by following the practices of Falun uh, Dafa. And what are the benefits that a newcomer can expect from the practices? Mm, good question. Um, so the benefits all depend on the person and what they put in into the practice. Um, when I started practicing, I didn't have a lot of health issues. Like I was relatively healthy. Um, I know a lot of people back in the 90s and early 2000s, and even now, they come into the practice because they, they have heard that it has uh, immense health benefits, right? It's like when you're cultivating your, your, your mind and your heart, uh, your body will start to radiate better health, right? We all know mind and body are, are one. Um, so for me, I didn't have many health issues, but I, I was struggling with um, deep rooted anxiety and depression. Like I was ordinary on the surface, but you know, deep down, I just felt I didn't have purpose and, and meaning in life. Um, so for me, the biggest benefit was that 
um, I, I felt I was radiating more life and I felt a deep impact on, on my relationships with, especially with my wife and my family. Um, and I just came to appreciate the, the better things in life, like community and, and traditions and, and, you know, the things that make a wholesome community wholesome. Um, I came to appreciate those things more because, you know, when you start applying those principles to your life, it's, it's, you're moving towards goodness, right? At least that's the hope is that you're moving towards goodness. So, yeah. So for me, I think the biggest thing was when I started practicing my anxiety and depression melted away, which was, I thought would never happen. Like I, I was struggling with those things for years and they, you know, would pop up every now and then, but, um, I look back now and I'm, I'm a completely different person as far as like, I, I don't, I rarely have anxiety. I, I never have depression. Um, it's just not part of who I am anymore. Yeah. Seeing millions of people practicing this itself is a example that uh, it works. So better our relationships or it could be health or anything to follow them. That's so amazing. Yeah. And yeah. What are the books or videos that uh, one can watch through to know more about the practice? Um, yeah, there are. So if you go on the, the official website, uh, www.falandafa.org, there are, um, there are the books that you can download. So they're all downloadable. I think the main one, so the main, so this, this book is, uh, these teachings are originally from um, China, right? So they've been translated into English and I think 40 other languages, um, all, yeah, all sorts of different languages. So I have the English version. Uh, this is the latest edition. It's called Juan Falun. And you can see I've, I've read it quite a bit. <laughs> um, but this is the main text. Basically, when Master Li was um, giving his lectures in the 90s in China, he went to, I think, 53 different uh, cities in China within a two-year period. And basically, was filling up stadiums. It was like 2,000, 5,000 people in these stadiums. And... Um, it was a nine day lecture. So this is the nine day lecture in written format. He edited it and made it more of a written, um, written material. Um, so this, I would say, if you are interested in looking into it more, this would be the best place to start. Uh, it's called John Fallon. You can download it and there's different versions. Like uh, this is the 2003 version. Um, I don't know about the other languages, but uh, I, I know about the English ones. This is a 2000 version. So there's different ones, but um, I mean, this is a book like, you know, in the Taoist practice, they have the, um, what's the one book, uh, the Tao Te Ching. And uh, it's, it's a book that you continuously read because as you advance in your practice, you get more wisdom from the book, right? It's something that you always just read daily and, and, and that's what guides you through your, your practice. So um, how does the community operate? Are, are there any facilitators or you people will get into the groups and have a book readings or exercise sessions? What is it all? Uh, how is it uh, organized? Oh, that's a, you know what? I've never been asked that question, but that's a great question. Um, it is, yeah, it's very loosely organized actually. So there are no, you know, with cultivation, there are communities, right? You need to have a cultivation community because it's very hard to do a spiritual practice, I think, on your own, especially in this modern world. You need the support of, of, of others who do the same practice, which I would say is the, the best way to do it is find a group and, and uh, join in in a group format, but very loosely organized. There's just people who get together um, on certain days of the week. They may do the exercises together. They may read together. There's even online groups where you can read with a group or, or, or do the exercises while listening to, mute, to the music together. Um, but there's no official like temple or um, gathering place or um, it's, it actually, I think perplexes people how we're so well organized, but so loosely organized at the same time. And it's all like people doing it of their own volunteer and their own will. Um, to get together and maintain the, the environment that we have. And, uh, and there's a group locally here in my city and uh, we get together, we, we just make it happen. Like, okay, we're going to meet on Sundays. Let's get together. We'll go to my office, your office. And, uh, and that's just how it's done. And, and we, we make sure to help each other and, and, and support each other. It's wonderful to know that millions of people are balancing both spirituality and material life together in a harmonious way. Uh, yeah, it's, I think, 
I think uh, I think that's the challenging part for any practice is like how do you do both, you know, take care of your family and your your work uh, demands and but also advance spiritually. But the beautiful thing is that, you know, with Falun Dafa, you can advance spiritually through those things. That's the whole point. It's like the practicing isn't just reading the book or doing the exercises. The practicing is actually, you know, going through the tribulations of life and the challenges of life and um, and and working on your your moral character through that. Right. Yes, that's, that's so yes. important and it's required for each and everyone on this planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And can you also tell a little about that persecution and why it happened? Yes. So there was in 19... Okay, so just to give a little bit of context, in, in 1992, the practice was introduced. It spread like wildfire. So within seven years uh, to 1999, a hundred million people in China were practicing. There were so many people practicing in China that uh, it said one in 12 people were practicing Falun Dafa. And you would see the emblem on uh, uh, business windows and street corners and things. Um, so it was very well known. It became a household name. And uh, even like driving to work in the morning, you would see practitioners doing the exercises in the morning. So it, it's interesting that like a lot of people haven't heard about it, but it's it was such a big thing in China. Um, with 100 million people practicing by 1999, keep in mind that there were only 65 million Communist Party members in China. Now in China, unlike other countries, China does not support freedom of belief. So that being the case, uh, if, if the Communist Party isn't number one, then that, that poses a threat to them, right? Uh, and that's true for uh, any religion or spiritual path in China. So in 1999, they realized that there was so many people practicing that they had to squash it, right? Not that we were threatening or anything. The dictator at the time, Jiang Zemin, uh, or the president at the time, uh, he, he basically launched a full-out persecution in July of 1999. And, uh, and his intention was to eliminate the practice entirely, like eliminate the people, there's actually a quote from him, and I can't remember it exactly, but he said something like, um, ruin them financially, ruin them spiritually, and uh, ruin their reputation, or something of that nature. So he really wanted them gone uh, for no other reason other than jealousy. Uh, so for 21 years, I believe it's been 21 years, uh, practitioners have been severely persecuted. Uh, and all the while, they've actually held a peaceful resistance. And the way that they fought back is by exposing it, which is really interesting. So they, they haven't fought back with guns or anything like that, of course. But um, all around the world now, people are becoming aware of, of what Falun Dafa is and what the true nature of the Communist Party is. And, um, and it's not a political thing, but, you know, if, if we can't even have the basic freedom of belief and we can't even practice true principles, right? Good principles that are universal to all people in all walks of life, then that's a problem for humanity. So uh, practitioners for 21 years have been um, brut brutally persecuted to the point that they even have their, their organs harvested and put on the black market. And this is all government sanctioned. So um, the, the scary truth is that if you need uh, a new retina or a new liver or a new heart or some organ, um, if you have the right connections, you can, you can get one within a couple of weeks in China. So if you fly to China, they have organs basically on demand, which is very sad. Um, and they're harvesting them from not only Falun Gong practitioners, but also the, 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 um, the Turkish Muslims, the, the Uyghurs, um, Christians as well, but most heavily from the, the Falun Gong. So it's a, it's a sad situation, but it's, it's something that we're, we're hoping comes to an end and, that needs to come to an end, of course. Yeah, that's nice. Obviously, truth will uh, be there for eternity, no matter what happens. And that's right. We are also temporary on this planet. And uh, through Falun Dafa, hope everybody knows to be magnanimous with the reality of their own selves. Mm -hmm. okay. That's so nice uh, hearing about this. So, I, I do see a lot of people doing this Falun Dafa in uh, communities uh, in India too. Hopefully it is oh. there uh, everywhere around the world. And in, in every city it is there in India as well. And I do hear a lot uh, from, uh, from some of my friends that it is there in US equally as well. It has reached uh, nook and corner already and hope it expands more and more in a very peaceful way to bring peace onto this planet.
that's uh, yeah that's awesome i didn't know that so there are big groups in india as well where you are you've seen them exercising and and practicing yes 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 they are but, they are uh, whatsapp uh, groups and uh, consistently they are introducing to the new speakers we are uh, looking forward for this practices and starting from uh, small children to elder people are joining these practices and uh, it's the uh, very unique uh, just by attending one session even i have attended uh, one of these sessions and we feel so peaceful maybe we are we land up in a different dimension <laughs> yeah yeah It's yeah that's so unique that's awesome yeah and it it's it is actually really interesting there's like little children and the elderly all practicing at once it's it's really nice to see the the unity in the community which is it's nice allen gong daily nationwide There are five gentle exercises including a sitting meditation which are wonderful for stress relief, mental clarity and improving physical health. Besides doing the exercises, Falun Gong practitioners also follow three principles of truthfulness, compassion and tolerance. Practitioners strive to follow these principles in their daily lives. As a result, they achieve greater selflessness, wisdom, and inner purity. Today, except for China, Falun Gong is freely practiced in over 100 countries around the world. In parks, companies, schools, and university campuses, there are practitioners coming from all walks of life. Yeah, that's so awesome. Uh, thanks for your valuable time today. Uh, any final messages to the speakers who are looking for follow up? Well, first I want to thank you. I appreciate you for for having me on your show, and I I wish your your program gets uh, gets even bigger and bigger. Of course, um, as far as the practice, I think if this is something that resonates with you, then you just have to dive into it, and that's kind of the the best advice I can give is uh, dive into the book Juan Falun. look go on the website uh, www.falandafa.org and you just have to see if it's right for you no one can force you to do anything um, but you have to follow your heart and that's what I did and um, it led me to this practice and um, the benefits are always there i'm always I like a, a true spiritual practice there will be benefits so um, yeah i would say just give it a shot and see if it's right for you that's so amazing we have been providing the links uh... related to follow the practices below this video and also the couple of exercises which are already played uh, in the video uh, can you give more insights how long it takes for this exercise to practice yeah um you know what it's they're very simple to learn in the beginning i mean it might be it's a different practice right so i might take you a little bit of time but they're very simple exercises um I think the challenging thing is uh holding the postures because some of the exercises you have to hold postures for some time. Um but that's why it that's why it's awesome because you know that there's there's room to grow, right? Um the the sitting meditation it's double lotus so your legs have to go up like this, which can be challenging for some people especially if, if they're really tight or they have hip issues. For me, I'm a man, it took me a long time to get into that position. I I just not very flexible. Uh, it took me a couple of years but um just stay just stay hopeful and committed and and it'll pay off now i can do the double lotus and um it's quite enjoyable and and at times painful but i think yeah the challenging part is not learning it the challenging part is staying disciplined so make sure you you carve time out if you're in, if you really truly committed and and uh and make it a part of your life yes so amazing thank you just for this wonderful interview we are looking forward to explore what uh, follow up is Please, I thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Please, everyone. I hope you watch and subscribe to Pyramid Times. Thank you.